Oh, uh, hey, uh, it's Rob, and I'm out on the back porch because uh, it's a nice day. The wind is a little high, so I don't know if the microphone is going to pick up a lot of wind noise, but uh, seeing as haunting season is almost over, I mean, by the time you see this, Halloween will have passed, but uh, it's still before Halloween for me, and I am going to try and make a fog chiller. And with a normal fog machine just running by itself, The fog comes out fairly hot because the way that the fog is made is it uses a uh, it uses a ceramic heater in there to heat up the fog so when it comes out it wants to rise now it's a little windy today so it's really difficult to see but you can see that it goes up now the fog chiller does what it says it chills the fog so it wants to lay on the ground more there are a number of designs for fog chillers, and the big professional ones use actual cooling equipment like an air conditioner. Uh, I am following the directions that I found on YouTube of this wonderful gentleman. Uh, please go look at his, uh, his setup before going on, because, you know, I'm working from where he went. But he's using one of these Husky bins that's nice because it has this waterproof lid so it's got a seal built into it, and it's got six clamps all the way around. So it forms a fairly tight seal. He's also using an ultrasonic mister, which I found really interesting. This thing provides quite a bit of mist, uh, and what happens is he pumps the fog into the mist. The mist cools it down, and it flows out the other side. He's got a fan attached to it, kind of like this one. Matter of fact, I think this is the exact one that he has. It goes on the outlet side. So the outlet side is bigger than the input side. And part of that is because when you set up the fog chiller to go into the, or when you set up the fog machine to go into the fog chiller, you have an opening that's slightly larger and slightly away. And it pulls outside air in and makes it a little cooler and provides more volume for the fog. Along with the fan, it helps pull fog out of the machine, so you get essentially a larger volume. It doesn't mean that it's all going to be chilled, but it does tend to spread and make it look more look bigger. Other designs, and ones that I've used in the past, use either ice or dry ice in the bin for the fog to pass through, and that then chills the fog and it hangs nice and low to the ground. This design, I'm going to do a combination of the two. So I'm going to have the ultrasonic mister in the bottom and then an ice shelf above that. The fog will enter through the top, have a diffuser that will help diffuse it through the ice, gets down into the lower chamber, picks up the mist, cools it down even further, and then that goes out the exhaust hose. I think that will work better. I'm not sure. I just, I, having, you know, two, two ways of cooling in at the same time, I think makes it likely that the fog will stay down low. So we'll see. One of the things I like about this design is that it's got floats that keep it at just the right distance underneath the water. This little thing right here is a water level sensor. If that goes above the water, this will shut off to keep it from being damaged by running dry. And just to have a look at how much uh, how much fog this puts out just by itself. I mean, even on a windy day like today, that's a good chunk of uh, good chunk of fog uh, or mist, I suppose you could call it. But hey, the more the merrier, right? The neighbor decides this is a great time to uh, mow his lawn. So in order to go through this top piece, uh, I'm following the designs of our friend and I'm using some two inch conduit. So I'm gonna drill a hole to fit this. This goes on the bottom and then the plastic here and then this goes on the top. So. When I was drilling this hole, I had a two and a quarter inch bit. And it turns out a two and a quarter inch bit is 
just a little bit too small. They really need a two and a half. I've already drilled the two and a quarter inch hole and trying to drill a two and a half over that is a really, really tough deal. But there's a trick. Put the two and a quarter inch bit on the inside and a two and a half inch bit on the outside. This will fit inside the hole and guide this one. I'm also drilling in reverse because this is plastic and uh, it'll just grab and tear if I do it the other way. So let's go ahead. Ah. There we go. And there's a couple of So with some adhesive in there, that will work nicely. Now this is the input for the fog machine. So there will be a uh, small section of PVC that fits in here with a 90 degree bend for the inlet of the fogger. For the exit hole, I'm using something very similar. This is uh, three, I think this is three inch. Yeah, three inch um, male and female PVC fittings and I drilled out the hole in the side with a uh, three and five eighths inch hole saw. Run backwards because it's going through soft plastic and otherwise it can really easily rip. Uh, and this goes in this way. I'm going to put some o-rings on here to help tighten it up. I also drilled a one inch hole to put in this waterproof connector. This is for passing the power cable for the uh, ultrasonic mister through. Unfortunately, it's just too big for the screw on connector, or just too small for the screw on connector. Uh, I'm going to try and use it without that. I think it will be fine, um, mostly because this is going to be coming out this way and uh, this connector is going to be far far away from the water but I do want to find some way of um, like get a rubber stopper or something that I can put in there to help keep the mist and everything from escaping through this hole. Uh, for the proper placement of the fog nozzle you want to have a space in between of about an inch to a little over that. Somewhere around two fingers, depending on your finger width, is just about right. All right, first test with just the mister. That's not bad. Could be a little better, but... It lies a lot lower than the fog just coming from the fog machine. And it looks thicker. As for a shelf for the ice, I'm going to use one of these. It's a little two foot section that fits inside a, uh, a closet. It's got these spacers that come with it. I'm going to see if I can use those. I need to make some cuts to it to make sure that it fits, so I'm going to get to doing that. I cut the ends off of the, the, uh, the little nub ends off and then I cut around the outlet over there. Uh, I just used an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and what I'll do now is I'll put some uh, quarter inch hardware cloth over this over the uh, escape hole so that the ice doesn't you know fall down into the sides uh, until it gets really really small. <laughs> but I'm going to see if this will hold. This seems to be holding in place pretty well with just a friction fit. I can adjust the uh, height a little bit. So I think maybe I will do that, bring it down a little lower, that way I can add more ice. And we'll see how this works.
Okay, I was a little bit wrong. This is half-inch mesh hardware cloth, but it's plenty to hold the ice in. And I also have some over the outlet to keep any ice from going out there. Ice added. Uh, this is the remnants of, a, uh, I guess, an 18-pound bag. Uh, I'm thinking an 18 or 20 pound bag would fit in there nicely. All right, let's see what happens. Well, it's a little too windy to really see it working, but I think the way that it's lying down, if this was a calm night, yeah, you see it looks like it's hanging really low to the ground until the wind picks it up. So I think that's going to work exactly well for what I need it to, and uh, I'm happy for now. So, yay! Had a project go well. First time out. Kind of, sort of. A few mistakes, but, you know, not too bad. Anyway, uh, hey, if this helps you, uh, if you come up with improvements or anything like that, I would be more than happy to see them. Let me know. And uh, hey, happy hunting. So I almost forgot the inline fan part. I'm still trying to figure out how to couple it properly. Uh, trying to get the fittings right is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, but it seems to be working pretty well. And this kicks on next. It's like a five second burst. And you can see where it is. It is hug hugging the ground. So. This is a good sign. So yeah, just a quick wrap up. Uh, still don't know quite how I'm attaching the the uh, fan to the fogger. I'll get that figured out in the next few days, or I'll just run it as is. <clears throat> uh, the other thing is, I just wanted to let you know this took me about five hours from start to finish, so it really wasn't too bad. I was I was expecting it to take longer, but it went together fairly well. Still not sure about the ice. Uh, it seems to block some of the mist coming up from the mister. So, I'm not entirely sure how to, uh, how to work that. But anyway, um, I did put ice in the water and just got the water cold and that seems to work fine too. So anyway, just an update. Um, I will see you guys next week. So I figured some things out. The way that I've attached this to the output of the fogger is I got this, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's a coupling that is adjustable. You can rotate it around and go 90 degrees or, you know, weird combinations of angles and things like that. And it happens to fit perfectly over the 3 inch PVC here. And then the crimped end on the other side, if I just open that up a little bit, this fan 
fits just inside there. So that's a nice tight seal. I've got the flex tape around it and then this one I've just got uh, wrapped with a clamp. And this is, I mean that's pretty solid. It's flexing because the wall is is flexing. But now I can attach uh, you know some some dryer vent duct work to it or I've got a uh, plastic drain that I've got a coupling on that can fit onto it too that's a, like a 12 foot section that's uh, fairly rigid. Uh, you know, it's that accordion stuff. The other enhancements I made are on the inside. <sighs> First of all, I did take the uh, brackets that hold it on to um, the upper closet and I bent them so that they make a uh, they make feet for this grate. So they actually hold it up off the bottom giving it enough clearance for the uh, mister, the ultrasonic mister, to have plenty of clearance to be, you know, doing its misty thing, keeping the ice up. I'm probably going to use either block ice or I've got some uh, clear plastic bottles frozen, and I'll be using those so it's not really blocking as much of the fog. The other thing that I did is I put an extender piece on the inside that goes right up to the grate on the inside. Let's see if I can get a better picture of that for you. The concept is that the fog will go down into the cavity, it will be primarily in this cavity above the mister where it will pick up the mist and then come up through the grate and through the ice and then out the exit hole. I'm probably going to adjust this a little bit, keep it up a little bit higher, but that's uh, that's how it's intended to work. We'll find out whether it actually works that way or not later. Another name in the death toll. What is your 